So today we're talking about deformities. It's not necessarily the most pleasant topic to talk about with fish, but it comes about just naturally in our fish keeping experience, either when we buy a fish or if we breed a fish or if we're gifted a fish. So first off, let's sort of think about why deformities come to happen. Deformities are either genetic, environmental, or nutritional. And I'm gonna go into depth on all three of these things. But first I wanna take a little tangent here and talking about are deformities always bad or are deformities good? And some of you might realize where I'm going with this and some of you might be wondering, Andrew, how on earth are deformities ever good? Well, first let's start with a definition of what a deformity technically is. A deformity is a distortion to a part of the body shape or size or figure. Now, some more of you might understand where I'm going with this or see where I'm going with this, but for those that haven't caught on quite yet or are still wondering how on earth a deformity could be good, I'll give you guys a couple seconds just to think about it and think if there are any good deformities in the hobby. So some deformities that I could think of off the top of my head that are pleasing to people would be long fins, it would be double veil tails, it would be bubble eyes, it would be shortened bodies, it would be missing fins. Those are the ones that just come to the top of my head and all these things are things that we desire in some of our aquarium fish that are technical deformities. And all these deformities that we're talking about in the situation are genetic deformities or deformities that are gonna be passed on through the generations of those fish because it is in their genes and that is how they're getting passed along. So while we're talking about genetic deformity, let's actually talk about how genetic deformities usually come about. So genetic deformities can come about through mostly inbreeding. And inbreeding is the process of taking fish that are closely related to one another, either siblings together or parents and siblings or half siblings or cousins or things that are very close related that when you start reproducing them there is a higher chance for deformities to start coming out and genetic variation to be coming out that is negative in the wild those deformities like missing fins or longer fins or shorter bodies or bubble eyes or things of that nature would impede that fish from being able to actually swim away from predators and they would get consumed eating and that would be removed from the genetic pool. But in our aquariums, we can choose and selectively take those fish that would normally not fare as well in the wild and be able to keep on breeding those and inbreeding those to create deformities that are acceptable. But there's also the issue of when we are inbreeding fish because we're trying to line breed or we only have access to a certain amount of fish from a small pool, we can run that same problem of inbreeding that we end up with fish that have uh, crooked backs or shortened bodies or missing fins or things like that and those are all probably not desirable in fish. The second type of deformity that we're going to talk about is environmental deformities and these can come in a whole slew of different topics and things and a very long list but we'll sort of just briefly cover them and make you aware of them but we're not going to go exhaustively in each one of those because that would be almost an entire video in and of itself talking about them. So when it comes to environmental deformities or deformities caused by the environment, think metals in the water. You have temperature swings that are either too high or too low for the fish as they're developing. You have poor water quality as they are raising up that is Im impacting their growth. Too much water movement for the fry can also cause deformities in the fish. And a couple others that I'm blanking on right now but also are environmental or things that are in their environment that are causing these deformities to happen. The third type of deformity comes from nutrition, rather a lack of nutrition within the fish's diet. And this can show itself in like crooked spines, darker colorations, and higher mortality while it's growing up. And the reason for the lack of nutrition and the reason for its deformities could be twofold. It could be either that the food that we're feeding it doesn't have all the necessary nutrients that it needs and isn't a complete feed, or it is because we are not feeding frequently enough and that they are getting the nutrients they need but they're not getting enough to actually grow. So they have to start basically cannibalizing themselves to try to be able to survive and are not actually being able to grow to their fullest potential. So this is why you hear people saying that you should feed varied diets or switch up the foods that you're feeding your fries. So that way in case one food is lacking in a particular type of nutrient, hopefully that other diet or feed that you're feeding them will make up for that lack of that nutrient in the other one that you're feeding so you can sort of balance everything out but if you aren't feeding it enough you're still going to run into deformities that are caused by a lack of nutrition so what are some things that we can do to reduce the amount of deformities that we have in our fish that are in our care as they're growing up well we can make sure that we provide really good water quality conditions for them or environmental conditions for them and keep out toxic metals make sure we don't have a lot of flow depending on the species 
making sure we have the proper temperature, things of that nature that we can provide environmentally to make sure that our fish aren't deformed. When it comes to genetic deformities, what we can avoid is inbreeding. We can avoid breeding siblings or parents with one another to prevent the actual deformities that come about from that inbreeding. And for nutrition, we can make sure that we are feeding them adequately, both in terms of the frequency, as well as in terms of the nutritional value of the feed that they are getting. So I'm trying something new this time around. I want to ask you guys your honest opinion about what you thought about this video, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever you want to say about it, I want to hear your comments about it so I can try to change things for what you guys would want to see in a video. I greatly appreciate all the feedback you guys are going to give on this. I will see you guys over my next video. I hope you guys have a blessed day. See ya.